we're going to be suturing with the Surgi Reel small five layer light skin pad. This pad is designed to replicate the layers of the body wall. So if we look at it, it's designed to replicate the skin, the subcutaneous, there's an external fascial layer, muscle, and internal fascial layer. This one actually has a mole as well, so you can practice using this for biopsies and or resecting of the mole. We're going to use it with the surgery reel as tensioning base here, and so to apply it, we're going to place the base perpendicular to our body, set the pad right in the middle of the base, using your thumb and middle finger to hold the base, pick it up, index to hold the pad, and then we can push the pad into the tensioning base. And then you can use your right hand to hold the pad and the base and push that down in to the tensioning base as well. Then we're gonna go ahead and place this parallel with our body to do our suturing. To begin suturing, first we have to make an incision. So we'll take our scalpel blade, carefully take the cap off, so that we don't cut ourselves. And then we're gonna make an incision. Generally, if you're right-handed, your incision will be from left to right. If you're left-handed, the incision would be from right to left. In this case, because we have five layers, we want to practice incising each layer individually. So we place the bevel of the blade down and make just enough pressure on to get through the skin. And you can appreciate that because the tensioning base is in place, it helps to open this up much as it would for a regular incision. I can continue down through the subcutaneous layers until such a time that I get to the first fascial layer, and the first fascial layer is just underneath. So as I continue to make my incision through the first fascial layer, you can see the muscle showing up, muscle there, and then I can continue down through the muscle and eventually all the way through to the deep fascial layer. So you can see the five layers there the deep fascia, muscle, superficial fascia, subcutaneous, and skin. We're gonna begin by suturing the deep fascial layer. And in this case, we're using a 3-0 monofilament nylon. You would typically use an absorbable suture material for this, but it'll give you the experience. We're gonna open the packet and then identify the needle. And if you can see the needle here, it is a 3 8 curve. So that means it comes around 3 8 of a circle. We want to position this so that we can get a hold of the needle with our needle holders just behind halfway. So here the needle holders at halfway. I'm going to place this just a little behind that in order to get the best use of the needle and the needle holders. In this case, we're going to use an example of a simple continuous pattern in the fascia. So we identify the fascial layer, and then we're going to push back the subcutaneous tissue with the needle, come down through the fascia, and try to be very careful only to get fascial layer and very little muscle and very little subcutaneous tissue. So we're gonna reposition our needle there. You can see we're barely getting any of the muscle and that supports it. We support the needle with our thumb forceps, reposition with the needle holders, and then we can pull the extra suture through. Similarly, on the near side, we're going to place the needle holders at the muscle, then move the subcutaneous tissue back so that when we place our needle, we're getting mostly fascial layers. We want to make sure we've got the short end of the suture not going through our loop. And we're going to make a square knot. So to make a square knot, we put the needle holders right in the middle of the suture line, come around once, grab the short end of the suture, and when we tighten, instead of tightening across the incision, we're going to tighten with the incision. Put the needle holders in the middle, come around the needle holders once, and then we're going to tighten along the incision. Make sure we keep this nice and flat, so that we don't end up with a slip knot. Needle holders in the middle, around that one time, come back and tighten along there. And one more throw. Minimum of four throws for a good square knot. 
Because this is going to be left within the tissue in our patients, we're going to go ahead and cut this about two millimeters long. To continue with the suture pattern, we're going to do it continuous. You can push away again, grab the fascia, identify the fascia, push this away, get just fascia, trying to get the least amount of muscle possible. Stabilize, bring that through. Again, bringing most of the suture through, pull the skin back, the needle just below the fascia, push the sub-Q back so we get a minimal amount of sub-Q, bring the needle through. Now what's great about this is that this is reinforced. Fascial layers should be very dense. And if you look at this, I can actually lift up the whole model and tensioning base with my suture going through our fascia. So it really replicates what we typically see with the fascial layer. Repositioning the needle so that we can continue on in our continuous pattern with the external fascial layer. Tightening it along the incision will bring it to better proximity and keep the tension in our suture pattern. When it comes time to finish the continuous pattern, as we get close to the end, we're going to take now a final bite on the far side of the incision, stabilizing that with the needle holders, bringing it through, but we're not going to finish this loop. We're going to leave that loop in place because we'll eventually tie to that. And we're gonna to come to the near side Again, position the needle. And so this will be the loop that we tie to. In this case, we're gonna keep just enough to suture that. Needle holders in the middle, come around that one time, grab the loop, rotate the loop over, and then we're gonna tighten along the incision line. Back to the middle of the loop, around one time, through there, and as we tighten, we open the jaws of the needle holder so that loop will equilibrate. Back to the other side, through, and tighten, and then one more. Bring that through, making sure that it stays flat. If I lift up on this, it becomes a slip knot. If I lift up on this, it becomes a slip knot. So I want to keep it straight. Open the jaws of the needle holder so that the loop will equilibrate. Again, because this is a buried suture, we want to leave the ends very short, so a couple of millimeters, so that we don't leave extra foreign material in the wound itself. To close the skin, we can use either a continuous pattern through the skin, and it starts much like a simple interrupted pattern, uh, and that for this model works the best. So we go through the skin, both sides, bring this through, and then we can close this with just a simple interrupted pattern or continuous. So you notice how the suture loosens a little bit. So I didn't leave quite enough tail. If I leave a little more, that would be better. It's a monofilament nylon, so they have a tendency to loosen like that. Come back and form this. And so we're gonna snug that down. You can see how that tightens down nicely. And then we can continue to use 
the rest of the suture pattern, four throws, and then we can, can close this as a continuous pattern. To do that, we're just going to grab the needle, reposition, and then because this is really nicely held in the tensioning base, we don't actually have to hold the skin with our thumb forceps. This actually causes trauma to tissue when you do that. We can actually just use the needle to come across for about four to five millimeters on either side. And then we can either come through one side at a time, reposition the needle, or if the skin is close enough together or the skin edges, we can come all the way across at one bite. The challenge with that is making sure that the bite distance from here to this, the far part of the incision and the near part of the incision to the edge is even because we want to make sure they are because that actually gives us the most functional and cosmetic end result. And you can see there that I was a little closer here to here than from here to here, which is why I think in most cases it's better to make the incision or close this suture line just going through one side at a time. Tightening along the line, I will hold that together. And we can work our way down to close. As we're finishing, realize that we probably needed a little more suture on this one to get the whole line closed, but we're going to show you how to close this, finish this knot off just here. So like any continuous, there's going to be a loop here and the long end here. We're going to put the needle holders between those two, wrap around the needle holders one time, rotate this loop through and tighten it down. Then it's going to loosen a little, but that's fine. Needle holders in the middle, around, rotate that loop over and now you can see it's going to be a nice square knot but as I snug down it will tighten against itself and that's one of the real benefits of the 3-0 nylon. Needle holder back in the middle around that, rotate the loop through and then one more time so we get four throws and this one you have to be careful to make sure that you make a square knot instead of a slip knot. When these end up at 180 degrees apart you can tell that they're a square knot, not a slip knot. We're going to cut these about a centimeter long and that gives us a continuous pattern. Now what's fun about this is that when you look at it, you can critique and you can see that this one I got a little further away. The distance is pretty good, pretty even. Maybe these two are a little further apart, but you can look at that and say, well, I want to practice that again. And all you need to do is to cut the sutures out. Remove them. And start again. And you can appreciate that you can see some small holes where the suture line was, uh, but that's really it. And you can start again and do this over and over 10, 15 times in order to make sure that you've learned your skill set in practicing closing the skin and the subcutaneous and also the fascial layers.